Karam Butt is one of the London Bridge attackers, apparently, was featured in a recent British documentary called The Jihadist Next Door. Fox News has not yet confirmed that it was him in the video, but Sky News, CNN, The New York Times, and Channel 4 have all reported it is, in fact, him. In any case, the man appears in the documentary attending a rally in a park where a radical preacher predicts that one day the entirety of Britain will be ruled by Sharia law. Watch this. The only English white person who's a non-Muslim was part of our group. But because he's white and he's English, he can go. But all of us that were just praying, we have to stay. This is the reality. This is the reality. This is the reality. Don't forget all the laws and all this. This is the reality. There's no reason for us to be detained. There's no evidence. We were just praying. We can't pray as well. Once again, it looks like this man's extremism was obvious for years, but the attack it caused was somehow a surprise, as it always is. President Trump is using the London attack to lobby for the return of his travel ban that would affect six countries, Muslim-majority countries. On Saturday night, the president tweeted this, we need to be smart, vigilant, and tough. We need the courts to give us back our rights. We need the travel ban as an extra level of safety. And today he wrote this, people, the lawyers, and the courts can call it whatever they want to, but I'm calling it what we need and what it is, a travel ban. A travel ban is a toned down version of what the president called for on the campaign trail in 2015. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. Mustafa Tamiz is a Democratic strategist and a former consultant to the Department of Homeland Security, and he joins us tonight. Thanks a lot uh, for coming on. Now, all the focus has been on the president's motives in this. What does he really mean? What does he desire personally? And I guess I would say that's unknowable, as it always is with people's motives. The question is, does the country deserve a higher level of protection in light of what we're watching happen in Europe? And I don't see how we don't deserve that. No, I, I, I agree with you that we need a higher level of protection, especially nowadays. But we have to identify where the threat is. As Charles was saying, you know, many of these radicals are homegrown, meaning that they're not, they've not come from somewhere else. They've grown within these countries. And so we've got to counter violent extremism and make sure that the ISIS narrative of a clash of civilization is not the one that we adapt. And, and you're right. Nobody knows President Trump's motive. What we're concerned about is that sometimes his rhetoric inflames that. And that's the concern by the intelligence organizations, okay, but this by counterterrorism groups. I, I guess. I mean, it's hard to generalize about intelligence organizations or counterintel people. I mean, it's a huge group. But look, this has been going on for a long time. You can hardly blame his intemperate language for all of it. But in the, in the 18 terror plots that have been foiled in the last couple of years, two-thirds were hatched apparently by people who would be affected by this temporary stop on immigration from those countries. So why would that have been a bad thing? Two thirds. Look, I, I don't know. Like Cato Institute did a study and they looked at people from 1975 to 2015 uh, and, you know, 3.5 million uh, uh, refugees have come here. Not a single one has, has committed a terrorist attack. So that's just a big number. And so we we have to do this as the world is, rather than the way sometimes maybe the president or others might want to see it. This is not a clash of civilization. We've got to effectively, from law enforcement and intelligence and human intelligence, go after the threat. And doing the travel ban uh, is not the most effective way. And yeah, that I'm sorry. comes from uh, from Look, the I, I'm sorry, you, you threw out a fake statistic. I I don't know if some think tank gave it to you, but I mean, here are the actual Cato numbers Institute on this. Institute is a notable okay. think tank on I, the I'm conservative just telling you, I'm not, look, I'm I'm not attacking, it, I'm not I'm attacking, just I'm, I'm just facts. saying, here, here are the actual I, I, facts. May 17th, 2016, a guy from, two guys from Somalia busted with bomb making material. November 16th, another guy from Somalia, Ohio State attack, as you know. September 16th, another Somalian. Here's another uh, Af Afghan, Somalian, Iraqi, Somalian, Somalian, Iraq, Sudan, Iraq. Some I mean, those, this is all yeah. within the span of a year, people arrested for terror plotting. I, look, I'm not impugning everyone from Somalia. I'm just saying this is real. Well, the, the, the real threat is homegrown terrorism, which we have to go after. Charles is right. When Charles was talking about that this is second, third generation in Europe uh, that have not assimilated, and one of the reasons why the assimilation hasn't occurred is we created, uh, Europe created a hostile environment for those people that were coming into this country. And what we don't want to do is we make the United States... You know what? I'm sorry. Right. I just can't, let, I can't, I can't, I can't, let, I can't let that stand. So you're saying that people attack the West because the West somehow isn't nice enough to them? 
welcoming that's them I'm into. Saying, Tucker, yeah, you, you said you, Tucker, that's you not, just that's said that. You said, that, that, come on now, I'm trying to keep this simple. You, but it, I, I'm got to say, it's I, a great I, thing to hear someone say that they face a hostile environment when they're brought over here at public expense and subsidized. Like, how is that hostile? I, I'm, I'm missing that. That that's the, look, look. If, if you if you study counterterrorism and you look at Europe. What's made the environment really bad is many of these folks uh, don't feel like they have opportunities and creates a false narrative. What, we, what the beauty of America is, is our hyphen. The first day that you land into the United States, you're an Italian American, you're an Irish American, you're a Jewish American, you're a Muslim American. That hyphen allows everybody to have their American identity. And that is something that Europe doesn't have. You have second, third, fourth generation people there that still consider themselves from the land that they came from. And that's the Brits' fault. Right. So the, the people who were murdered in Manchester, it's, it's their the, kids, it's, it's, it's look, their fault because they just weren't welcoming enough? Like, what are you saying not, exactly? The, the, what I'm saying is that we have to learn from their experience and make sure what we do here doesn't take place. What we this, do? You what know, you America, they let in America, all these people look, who are America, now trying to kill them and it's what's, their fault? What's different? What's different is that we are a, 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 a country of immigrants uh, bred from uh, religious freedom. Those are our cornerstone principles, and, and that principle has, has, has allowed us to grow and flourish for over 200 okay, years. Okay. Uh, this I'm, is I'm something fully aware that we of that, but, I, but are you saying that Muslims don't experience religious freedom in Great Britain? Uh, look, what I'm telling what you, you is saying? based on exactly. what, uh, what I'm saying is that Terrorists want to hurt and kill us, and the way they do it is by dividing. They're looking to recruit people that are within these countries. Online, there are recruiters that are looking for people that feel like there is a, a wedge in society. And by rather than creating more wedges and making the uh, environment more fertile for people to recruit, we've got to figure out a way to push back, hunt okay. down, and kill them. What and you're that's doing, what, that's what, what you're doing. doing, I mean, you know, part of what you're saying is right, but the subtext is the same as it always is, which is blaming the victims for this. The Brits didn't that's deserve this. True, yes, it that's is not, true. That's not you true. just suggested look, look, that they created a hostile I'm environment not, for immigrants not, and they somehow the abridged their look, religious liberty. I'm, yes, you I'm did. Not the one, I'm not the one that started tweeting against the mayor of London in, in right after a terror strike. That's what President Trump did. Well, he's not President here. Trump I'm is asking, a I'm divisive asking environment. You, oh, so it's, it's well, his I'm, fault. I'm telling you how the divisive it's environment the fault gets of created. American, I've noticed. Okay. Uh, look, it's, so maybe it's, it's the fault that, of people that, look, who come Tucker, here. Those are your words. resources. You know, I'm an American, and I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want the fault of our nation. Like, I'm as equally American as any other American. But I'm not, right? I'm not so contesting that. I'm merely objecting to your instinct to blame the victims in Europe for the attacks upon them. You're blaming the victim. You Those said are the words they that created a using, hostile Tucker. environment, and I'm watching and have for that 30 years. Part of, very much the that opposite. Is, that is that is that is part of the challenge because when you want people to assimilate, it's a two-way interaction. The people coming in the country have to want to assimilate, and the nation, the host nation, has to assimilate them. So when two, three, four generations go in and the assimilation is not occurring, we have to figure out you know, what the problem yeah. is. The okay. beauty of our nation is that people assimilate right. much faster than in so, Europe but if we because complain, of the American hyphen. If we complain about refugees or immigrants coming in from a certain region, then we're somehow abetting terrorism. It's, it's a fantastic no, no, rhetorical no. trick That's you've devised a... to get people to shut up, but it doesn't work Look, with me. Look, I think you're playing it. I'm not trying to shut you up, Tucker. God forbid I'm trying to shut you well, up. But right? you're saying Look, basically anybody who complains is, is abetting ISIS. That's what and you're that's saying. Not true. That's what you're saying. These are your words. These are not my words. These are your interpretations. This <laughs> because is, this I'm is clever the enough to know what you're saying. I'm not that smart, but no, I know what you're no, really saying. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's clever or... Okay. We're going to let our viewers judge right at a time.